If you're new to the class, my name is Professor Lando. Today we're gonna to learn about a specific thing, NTR. Blake, do you know what NTR is? No idea, Professor. So NTR, formal definition coming from a reputable source, Urban Dictionary, is a shorthand version of the word. Can you read that for me, Blake? Uh, Nito rare. Neto rare. <laughs> Neto ra re. So this is a Japanese word. Let's break it down phonetically. So ne, uh, referring to sleep, as in sleeping with someone in an affair, aka cheating. It's not good, professor. It's not good. Well, hold on. Torare, referring to a noun describing having something stolen or robbed. Based on that, what do you think NTR means? What is this lesson going to be about? Okay, so you said NEs of to sleep, right? You said to cheat? Ne, ne refers to sleep in the context of to sleep with someone. Yes. And then <laughs> Torari uh -huh. is stolen or robbed. So basically it's saying that you're sleeping with somebody, but then you got robbed at the same time. So you're sleeping and Think about this. robbed. This, so this is, something is taking place here. Mm -hmm. So maybe your heart is getting stolen because you're getting cheated on? NTR, netorare, what is it? In a story mainly referred to in the context of adult animated explicit media, AKA hentai, or doujins, the manga version, of course, NTR is a what? It is a genre where the story's protagonist has his or her lover partake in an affair or is stolen by another person or group of people. A lover that cheats on their partner. So you're saying it's a, it's a genre of like a kind of anime where somebody cheats on their partner and people actually enjoy reading this. They like seeing people get cheated on. See, you're already honing in it's on like, this exact thing I said. It's like yes, a, it's Blake. Like, it's like a little niche, is it? It's like people that like to see other people get cheated on. It's like that's a thing that turns yes, them on. It, it's, it's, okay, you, yes, you're on the right track. And that is what, Blake? That's called something. That's sick as fuck, dude. <laughs> what? That is not good. Who no, no. What's happening here? What's the word? What is the word? Uh, it's a thing. People say it all the time. Kind of a bad word, but it, it happens. What is this person? Uh, You'd call this person a... A degenerate. Yeah. Uh, uh, Think about what you just said. What's happening here? What's the scenario, Blake? So someone's getting cheated on. It's a genre. They like it because it's a weird niche. So they're trying to enjoy, get pleasure out of this for some weird and reason. And this person? You'd call this person a... <laughs> we'll get there, Blake. We'll get I'm there. I'm not there. I'm not there. So there's a focus on dark, depressing, sad, often rage-inducing Resolutions, atmosphere, plot, the contents of NTR. Um, again, yes, it's to see some sort of affair happen. And it, it's supposed to be dark, depressing. You said this is some what? Some sick shit. Some sick shit, depressing. I, yeah, I don't like this. I don't, I, the fact that people are even involved and like, like this, I, I'm, I can't, I don't and know. And that's why we're learning about this today, class, because this is actually quite popular, Blake. Would you believe this? <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're here. Look, look in the chat. They're all here right now. Are they look. Here? <laughs> they're here. <laughs> so, yes, you know, the thing is, it's, it's dark, depressing. So, there's sort of a contradictory thing happening here. If it's sad, if it makes you angry, if it's dark, depressing, why do people like NTR? Why would it be popular? That's what we're going to talk about here. And that's the key thing here is the contradictory phenomenon. Much like with in our previous lecture, girl failures. NTR's description would seemingly be something you would consider not popular. Detestable, as Blake put it, some sick shit. But despite this, it continues to be a mainstay in animated Japanese adult media. Do you have any ideas, Blake? Of why they like it? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking it's because it's like, uh, it's like, it's, it's, the people don't normally do it. So it's like, you know, it's not new to them, right? Uh, so it's, it's like, it's, it's very it's, sharp, astute reasoning. It's, yes, it's yes. Different, you know, people like to go against the curve. But me, I like to just stay with the curve, man, you know? 
and not get cheated on. And not get cheated on, exactly. Dude, my heart couldn't take, dude, I couldn't take it. Sir. You're a sweet boy, Blake, oh, I know. Hello students, thank you so much for watching. My name is Professor Lando. I am the educator here at the esteemed Ligma University. I make YouTube videos on a myriad of topics on every discipline imaginable. You may know me for my groundbreaking research on MILFs. What makes them so MILFy? Or perhaps for answering the question, Pokemon, is it okay to f*** them? Or most notably for my work on Femboys. I wanted to take a moment to announce the official launch of my Patreon page, which if you don't know, Patreon is a third-party crowdfunding website where viewers, fans, or students can support and directly fund the content being made by their favorite creators. The aim of this Patreon is to give students a way to directly fund and support the content, videos, and projects that I'm creating, as well as to give me more freedom in the things that I say and what I do, as well as the peace of mind to explore those things the way I'd like to. As a content creator whose main platform is YouTube, I often find myself navigating the landscape that is YouTube's algorithm. One example that I can give you that this Patreon page aims to alleviate is that oftentimes I find myself with ideas that I think would be entertaining or insightful, or I might be just simply interested in, but oftentimes these ideas take a backseat to content that is quite frankly more clickable, more potential to be viral, uh, basically more potential to survive in the YouTube advertiser landscape. I am offering additional content and rewards that are exclusive to this Patreon page, depending on the tier that you choose to support at. These rewards include a myriad of things, such as behind the scenes looks into what I'm doing, such as vlogs and updates, uh, art that I might make, as well as work in progress shots of what I'm doing at the time, videos that are otherwise unavailable to the public, such as old live streams of mine, or perhaps videos that for some reason or another are unavailable on YouTube. And additionally, a shout out for students on every video that they help produce. Thank you again. Thank you so much for watching and for checking out the Patreon page uh, for your consideration. Thanks for uh, watching my videos here at Ligma University. Um, your support means the world to me. Uh, I hope to be deserving of your amazing support by doing my best and I uh, hope to earn it through my creative expressions and endeavors online. Thank you so much. The mainstay characters, actors in this genre that is NTR, number one would be the protagonist. Who would be the protagonist in an NTR? Protagonist means they're the good guy, correct? I have to go back to English school, it's been yes. a while. So. Go on. So protagonist would probably be the, the husband or the wife that gets cheated on, right? The guy that's, you know. Yes, the protagonist is the one who is cheated on. This one's pretty straightforward. The next character we have is the lover. And who would this be? The person doing the cheating. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and there's, in this scenario, there's a very clear, obvious third party. The antagonist, which of course you uh, could stand to reason, would be who, Blake, in the scenario? The antagonist. Uh, so there's the person that's getting cheated on, right? That's the protagonist. And then there's the two people. So there's the lover and then the, the lover that gets with the person that's trying to uh, ruin everything, which is the antagonist. Yes, yes. The person who the lover cheats on with. Yeah. Very curious that you have such a good understanding of the scenario, Blake. <laughs> First of all, this scenario, there is a word for this. Do you know this word I'm thinking of? Um, no. This guy's a cuck, right? <laughs> That's what this is. This guy's getting cucked. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that, I've heard that before. Right. <laughs> so in, but that term is a very normie cultural yeah. term. Yeah. We're gonna borrow words here, cool. much like the word, um, Charisma, mm. right? Root word, charismiato, mm -hmm. <laughs> meaning of great vigor and... But we're talking about anime, Japanese media, hentai, doujins. Uh, but to borrow from their culture, this person, the person who the lover is having an affair with, is often called the bull. Which I want to make a clear stance here and say, very curious that time and time again, students, we find ourselves referring to things in a primal animalistic sense whenever we get the chance. 
despite how often we denounce furry culture, seems like maybe we're not too far from it. Dude, I got a, I got a question. Professor. Yes, Blake. So the protagonist, is he okay with all of this happening? Does he just go with the flow or does he fight back? That's my biggest thing. No, the, generally speaking, the protagonist is not gonna like it. Mm -hmm. But that's where the enjoyment comes from. Really? It's that they, it's that this is an awful situation. They're watching their lover in a romance with another, or perhaps more than one other. Mm, yeah. And it's gut wrenching. And you should hate it. And you kind of like it. Okay, I'm I'm kind of starting to see that. Well, okay, we'll, we'll 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 hold off. Uh, I think. You know, maybe it's a little hard to grasp here for the students and, and for Blake. Um, I myself am a visual learner. I'm an artist, so let's, let's draw a diagram here. Yeah. If you're in this room, this is, think of this as a generic hotel room layout. Mm -hmm. Top-down view. Yeah. Where would you most like to be uh, in this room? Definitely right there in the middle of the bed. Right there. Exactly. So in the NTR genre, and this is also borrowing from normie culture in, in a little bit, where do you think you would not want to be in this scenario? Uh, like just sitting there in general? I mean, the chair corner is tiny, a lot of claustrophobic space. Yes, Blake, yeah. you don't want to be in there. No. Here's the thing. In uh, the normal culture, normie culture here, this is where the protagonist is sitting. This is the cuck chair as it's most commonly referred to. Have you ever heard that? Never, not, not in my life. This chair right here. This chair is a specific thing and it always shows up. Sometimes it's a hotel chair. Sometimes it's just an office chair off to the side, but there's always a chair off to the side where the protagonist will sit. So the first school of thinking I would describe as the school of loss, school of weakness, the school of Cuckold tree. I would describe why would people like NTR? Well, it's the most basic form of reasoning. It's, it's a fetish. They like it. They like the idea of having their lover be with another or groups of others. It's just the most baseline, like they're, they're just into it in the most sickest form of it. In stark contrast to the first school of thought, we have uh, one of power, one of if you can think of yourself as the protagonist here, that's kind of not enjoyable. But might I posit to you students, what if you were in the place of the antagonist? Think about it that way. In this fantasy realm, they like to imagine themselves like, yes, I have stolen your lover. Me and my boys. About to make this look like a pack of raccoons got into this Auntie Anne's pretzel. Overnight. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. This is, this is what, what I imagine other people um, would place themselves in as a sort of third realm of reasoning for why people like NTR. The receiver. So that's the guy that plays catch. You throw him the ball and they catch it. The lover. Oh. It's interesting that you automatically assumed you, in your, your go-to hypothetical scenario is a male. Yeah, yeah, sports, you know, receiver. Interesting. Receiver, yeah. But yes, the receiver like to imagine themselves, or at least have a secondhand sort of second degree form of enjoyment by imagining that they would like to be the person getting fucked. Regardless of which role you assume in this hypothetical scenario, it comes from a place of angst. I think that is the key thing here with NTR and its appeal to hypothetical peoples. Uh, it's the shock value. The enjoyment of NTR as a genre, it, it's, it's the depressing nature of the scenario. How, how shocking it is that attracts the reader, not necessarily the specific act itself in its particularities of this scenario, of this affair. These people use this fiction as a means of escape in the same way that maybe we enjoy, I know I do, we enjoy horror or violent, gory content as, as, a, as a means of like, a shocking means of escape. It's not that the readers really want to get cucked mostly, or want this scenario to happen even in reality, but it's in this fictional realm, it's simply a stimulating, 
scenario to witness. It's the fact that it's not right that makes it attractive. So what, what do you think about this play? Well, dude, it blows my mind that anyone would ever want to be a protagonist. I think that is the worst rule of all time. I don't think, I, 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 like to me, that would diminish my soul if I was the protagonist watching somebody else get with my lover. But then, then you could be the guy that has the power. So you could be the guy that takes. So I, there was- Or the, the girl. Or the girl. Or the girl. Which honestly, the way you were saying that, that probably sounds like the best role. I did not say that. The way, you, the way you sounded like it. I did not say but that. But the power, the power guy is the guy that gets to grab and take. And who doesn't like to grab and take, right? But at the end of the day, Professor. That's savage. This is, this is, this you're, is. You're an animal. You ever heard of the, the word homewrecker? A person that comes in and destroys no. a relationship. You're doing your homework. This is literally the same exact thing of someone being a homewrecker, but the protagonist, I guess. Wouldn't necessarily like it. So I, uh, to me, a homewrecker is what's. That's a very. That's another term from uh, uh, normie culture. You're you're getting in touch with your roots. Yeah. The ugly bastard. This is a common character that, although not exclusive to the NTR genre, is a very popular character archetype. Blake, what do you surmise the ugly bastard is? Just a big, thick ugly, disgusting person, doesn't shower, you know, that's the thing I think of. Wow, you, you, you just, you really got that. You really, you really knew what an ugly bastard was. So this is, is a common archetype of an ugly bastard, often very large, uh, overweight, very old, older, um, often visualized as balding, unkept, like you said, dirty, unkept. And not only physically, but what you see outwardly is an indicator of what's inside. They're gross, they're gluttonous, they're greedy, and most importantly, horny. Do you find that attractive? Uh, Do you think people would find this attractive? That is the ugliest bastard I've ever seen. Hence the name, Ugly Bastard. Yeah. Much like girl failures, and yes, I'm taking the step to compare girl failures to ugly bastards, why is a character that's purposefully unattractive a popular thing? Why do you think, Blake? Uh, it just makes the story like even worse because if like if you see somebody like getting somebody that's like uglier than you, it just it makes it even worse, right? So the fact that it just yeah. Wow, Blake has a very good grasp on the NTR genre. I gotta say. Well, yes, very similar to the angsty appeal of NTR, the uh, draw of the ugly bastard is in fact the taboo. Um, to be defiled by someone that is beneath you is sort of a rush, uh, so I'm told. And it, it's, it's so wrong, but that's what makes it so right. Blake, what does that say? Uh, mind break. Mind break. Do you know what mind break is? It's where you break your mind. It's where you get mind blown. Subgenre, a tag. Do you remember what a tag is when we talk about doujins? Yeah, it's like the category, right? I'm so proud of you, Blake. How far you've come. This is a tag uh, that is found, it's found a consistent place in Japanese adult media and is often quoted, referred to, joked on uh, by uh, consumers, by viewers, by people online. And what is it exactly? Well, it's a genre in explicit adult works where the, uh, the person receiving the action has their mind broken, obviously so through the act of intercourse. Imagine that it is so pleasurable that their minds literally break. They go insane, often becoming nonsensical in their desire to perform coitus with another. They, they get, uh, have you ever heard the phrase like F stupid? I uh, no, have not. Have you ever? Never mind. The lead character reaches a level of ecstasy so overwhelming that their minds are unable to process and hold on to reason. So again, controversially so, um, this genre as well as NTR, it's rooted in this like foundational um, loss of sense. It's just, oh, you shouldn't be into it. Oh my gosh, I'm, oh, I'm getting fucking dummy. I'm sorry. <laughs> No. 
One key indication of the mind break is a, a topic we've gone over before, but uh, I don't think we talked at length about it. It's the, uh, Blake, you're familiar with this. Of course. Blake, what is this? That's an ahegao. Now, what is the definite? Well, Blake, calm down. What <coughs> is an ahegao? Can you explain it to these uh, new students here in the classroom? So an ahegao is like, uh, uh, it's an unpledgeable face you make during intercourse, so that's what they like to call the, the O face. Yes, it's a sort of, uh, it's an emote. You guys know, you know, like you're f playing Fortnite, like emotes. It's pretty much, Blake, you got an emote? Uh, dude, I got the, the floss. Dude, that's, you know, the, the old school OG. That's my emote. Yes, it's like an emote. Uh, you know, you're playing a game and you, you know, you kill someone, you, you emote on them. Mm. That's sort of like the hentai version of flossing is the ahegao. It's a key indication of mind break. They're kind of uh, associated here. Um, and again, we've gone over this in a previous lecture, but I think it's relevant here, so bringing it up. It's a facial expression used in Japanese explicit adult media to convey, it conveys intense physical pleasure. Note that it's only the receiver of the intercourse that performs ahegao. You wouldn't be giving it, you, you wouldn't be on top and you wouldn't go, uh, you know, that, that's not, it's, it's you're receiving it. And that, that's only markedly a, a submissive role that you would take. It's composed of tongue out, eyes rolling into, you're, it, you're, it's so, you're, your mind's breaking, it's so pleasurable that your eyes roll into the back of your head, tongues out. And uh, it can be coupled optional here. It's like when you're picking out a, it's like when you're building, when you go to build a bear, do you wanna put a little bow tie on it? Do you, do you get the bigger one or the small? It's sort of like that, it's an optional uh, part of the ahegao, double piece. Uh, in practice, an ahegao, uh, in this hypothetical situation, I'm a visual learner, so um, tongue out, eyes rolling into the back of the head. Let's, let's, let's role play here a little bit, students. It's good to get some hands-on experience. Um, imagine, I, I'm going to opt for the double peace sign. I think it's, 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 it's sort of a matter of taste. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people make some, oh, it reminds me of um, Winston Churchill when he goes like this to the, you know, and it's like, ah, but I like it. So this, is, this will be my... Wow. Pretty good. Let's see yours. Uh, okay. Imagine. Yeah, okay. Imagine okay. yourself. Your, okay. your mind's getting broken. Okay, so you say it's more of like an O face, right? Uh, peace sign. Optional. Optional, but I like the peace sign. I think the peace sign is good. I like the peace sign too. Yeah. Yeah. I think the peace sign is really good. Let's see if I can get maybe a, 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 an O going, you know, like a. Stop. Yeah, I dude, that felt good. <laughs> With these subjects, there is a clear separation of fiction and uh, reality, which has been an ongoing discussion, um, much similar to the one that often comes up about violence in video games. Uh, but where do we draw the line? I play Gears of War and I have a chainsaw. I'm cutting it. Is that really indicative of what I seek in real life, what I intend to do in real life? Most people would say no. No. And the question is, uh, again, where do we draw the line? Like if I want to imagine myself getting stolen by a group of ugly bastards right in, and, you know, in front of my childhood lover to the point where, you know, my, my, mind, my mind snaps because uh, you know, my basic sensibilities are, are being rendered useless because I'm just going dummy. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's where we draw the line. I don't know. I'm just going to say that in explaining this scenario, NTR, this phenomenon, in explaining why, I think we can conclude that it's, it's what's so wrong that makes it feel right. Absolutely right. Okay. Mm -hmm.